Yeah, yeah. like it wouldn't make sense for. The, yeah, yeah, I know that. I, like, I mean, I'm struggling to. to it's a teaching. You're right. right. It's it's not, and I've heard that from Jehovah's Witness too, right? That Jehovah's have yes, yes, they have a certain uh, notion of that Satan is ruling right now. He's in charge, right? I mean, so again, you know, that wouldn't resonate because that can imply a whole bunch of other things, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't think if you continue that thing, you can come up and then, and we can just be sitting here. We can say, okay, okay, let's assume this is true, and then you take all the implications of that, and then you will just run into other contradictions that would be very clear, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like so rather said, than you, doing you, all you, that, you, you take a falsehood and, te- and make you believe in a exactly, bunch of other ones, yeah. Right. So, so, so that's that. So I think so. This is so. My point is like, do you understand the concept of God in Islam? Yes. So oh yeah, you make making sense. Original yeah. sense, original sin, all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So now the next thing I want to talk about is integrity of knowledge because that was the second point we want to talk about, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, from Islamic tradition, Quran is preserved, right? Yes. So meaning that you can go across the world, you'll find the same Quran. Right. Or across the geos, you'll find the same Quran, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you have the original Arabic words that are preserved. Arabic language is accessible, right? You can learn that. So it's possible for you to go back to the originals, mm-hmm. right? Now, when it comes to the tradition of the prophets, of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, what he did, what he said, right? Now, even those things, we have a whole science behind it, right? So, you can imagine that, you know, so a companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw him doing something, right? Or heard him saying something. And they, and they wrote it down. They, they wrote it down or they narrated it. So, there was a lot of dependence on actually verbal tradition mm-hmm. in that time. They, right. were write, they were writing as well, but their primary preservation was verbal, right? So, and obviously, if he did that, many other people would have seen that too, right? And just like how you were giving the example of Paul and you know him meeting someone or not, and all that sort of you know age. So there's a science uh, in Islam, Islamic science that is called like the sciences of people or the knowledge of people. So, so once you have that narration, what would happen is that you say, okay, such and such person heard from such and such person who heard from this, who heard from that, all the way up until the companion of the prophet, and from the prophet. So from that whole chain. This whole science around the chains, right? So you know each individual in that chain, when they were born, when they were died, you know, were they men of integrity? Were they trustworthy people or they were known sinners or like, you know, people would not care? Also, they could be sincere people, but they were not physically strong to remember things, right? So based on all that research and how many other people narrated the same thing, each narration, mm-hmm. each narration, right? So a narration is... This guy said, heard from this, 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 this is a narration. Each narration is actually classified, right? Mm-hmm. So there are trust levels, right? So there are five, six, eight trust levels that, you know, this is very likely to be true mm-hmm. all the way up until fabricated, right? So there are narrations like that and the scholars have said fabricated. This is not true because, you know, this person was a known sinner or... Um, this person never met that person, right? Whatever. So right. what are reasons? Mm-hmm. Each narration is actually classified as well. Mm-hmm. So meaning there's a lot of integrity and a lot of science behind whole Islamic knowledge that, that is accessible to everyone, mm-hmm. right? So that's from the sense of integrity, meaning that let's say today, if there was no Islam and I just, let's say if there was no Muhammad, peace be upon him, and I want to, and that means I should be following Jesus Christ, right? I can't go back to the original, even if I want to. Right. Mm -hmm. So then what you are left with is what you are actually upon. So before the coming of time, before the Prophet Muhammad came, right. So between Prophet Muhammad and Jesus, there was a time period uh, when in which we call people, they were on their natural inclination that know God exists, that knew that Christianity doesn't make sense. And they just didn't know how to worship God. So they would just like do good, but they wouldn't worship the statue. They would not worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's kind of how I think you are in, in some sense, mm-hmm. because there are certain things that are, you've been taught and doesn't make sense to you. So, and then when the light from the Prophet Muhammad came, they, you know, uh, agreed to that. Actually, so when the first time Angel Gabriel came to Prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. right, and he, he heard what he heard, and then he went to his wife, and was like, you know, this is what happened to me, and, um, you know, uh, he's also like, you know, this is shocked, right? And then his wife took him to her cousin, I believe it was her cousin, who was a Christian scholar, right? Right. And so that was the first person actually who sort of, I mean, after his wife, who attested to what Prophet Muhammad was saying, he's saying, you know, who came to you is Angel Gabriel, and, you know, 
I'm old, but I wish I could live up to the time when you would be given the message or things like that, right? So he was the first one who actually, you know, accepted it as a Christian man. Really? So, yeah. So, okay. and, and this is a book in the books of history. Um, uh, I and, missed that part in the, when I was uh, learning about the, the yeah. life of the prophet. Yes, yes. I mean, if, yeah, if you, if you read, so for example, if you take one of these books or... Uh, oh, I was going to ask about that later. Yeah. So the, the life of the, uh, the prophet, you will see that. There's a life, pre-Islamic life, mm -hmm. in which he never worshipped idols. Right. He, he didn't drink. He was not. He was just not committing the ill things that were in the society, just because of his own heart that yes. God had given him. And then he was med he was meditating, reflecting on the creation of God, so on and so forth. And going to the caves exactly. and so on. Until at the age of forty, when you know Angel Gabriel come to him, and then slowly, 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 more and more information came, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Right. So from that first incident, when Angel Gabriel came to him, and him going to his wife. They were going going right away to that Christian uh, scholar, mm -hmm. uh, Waraka in Nofal. So that's that was a guy uh, that that approved of that. And there again, like other kings as well, uh, from uh, the rather in, uh, that Prophet Muhammad wrote letters to, and they accept Islam, and you know, uh, they accept Islam and the the verses about Jesus and Mary as it was recited to them. You know, they heard they were flowing, uh, their eyes were flowing with tears and so on and so forth, right? Like they don't make sense. This is the truth, and what have you, right? Mm -hmm. So all that was there. Now the third thing that I had here was like, okay, so with all that, how do I know Islam is the truth? Yeah. So for well, that, and like, like how is there not another? Yeah. Another chapter in the book. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So my, I, I use my phone, and there's a chronic example of that as well. So point is, it's unlocked, mm -hmm. right? I put my finger. Mm -hmm. It's unlocked, right? Right. So it recognizes the fingerprint. So I think, essentially, uh, we have this print operating system, firmware, whatever you want to call it inside us, that has the ability to distinguish the truth from falsehood, mm -hmm. right? So once that light comes to you, your heart will tell you if it's true or not. Now, heart over time, just like phone, you know, when it's new, it's fresh, it's running fast, and when I install different apps, and when Facebook starts spying on me, it becomes slow, right? Right. <laughs> so over time, you know, heart gets corrupted, influenced, you know, contaminated, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then something happens and then you start removing that contamination, right? Sometimes that contamination is removed by dialogue, sometimes by debate, sometimes by research, whatever. But essentially you get to that state that everybody would have that chance that they would be able to recognize the truth and they would either follow it, right? Or they would not follow it, just like Satan did not follow it, due to various reasons. It could be you know, arrogance, it could be the fear of people, whatever it is, one way or the other, you know, eventually you'll have to make that decision, right? And, you know, in general, if somebody is sincere, like, I mean, you're taking your hours off, like in your off day and coming here and talking, what have you, right? This is, you know, commitment, this is sincerity towards seeking the truth, mm -hmm. right? And if somebody's seeking the truth, God will show them the truth, right? And it will be clear to their heart, and then it will be up to them to follow or not, right? So that's essentially, that's number one. Number two, as I said, I don't think anybody can come up with a more complete definition of God, right? More monotheistic understanding of God than Islamic understanding, mm -hmm. uh, the integrity of knowledge, right? So if you take Islam away and I say, okay, because it's easy, right? I mean, we know that there's a God. That's not an issue, right? How do I worship God? What does God want me to do? How do I know what's right, right from wrong, right? What is right in the sight of God? How do I get to that knowledge? So if you take away Islam and Islamic text, what else do I have, right? Um, so these things are essentially what makes me confident, mm -hmm. right? That this is the truth, right? Um, you know, there are people, some people, their metric is, you know, I saw miracles happening, right? Mm -hmm. I saw changes in my body or my health or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't buy into that because if you think about it, do you, you know you know of Antichrist? Of course, yeah. Right? He would have a lot of power, mm -hmm. right? So that's not the way to judge who is right from the way, from the one who is wrong, mm -hmm. right? Because you can be tested by someone who has power, mm -hmm. right? Second thing is, you know, Hindu people who worship like, you know, animals or cows and what have you or and idols, they also see miracles. Yeah. Right? So, you know, seeing miracles is not necessarily the metric of truth. Right, I mean, if, if that's the metric of truth, then see here, sorry, yeah, 
Christianity, we are told to look out for miracles, signs, and wonders. Yeah. In order to, <coughs> excuse me, in order to um, shed light on the gospel. Right. So when the word of God, right, the gospel, right, uh, of Jesus Christ is, is proclaimed, right, is evangelized, right, right, is proclaimed, you will then subsequently, to know that it's true, see miracles, signs, and wonders. Right. Islam is not. No, no, no I'm not it, saying that. So, so for example, look, I mean, when my car was stolen, right, there was a very slim percentage chance that my car would be given back. Right. No, right? But what I'm saying is, like, you don't have to, what I'm saying is, like, you don't see one to the other. It's like, it doesn't. No, so it helps that. you, yeah. right? right? So, for example, so my, so my, when I was talking to my wife, I'm like, yes, I will be from those 1%, right? Why do I have to think that I will be from the 99% people, right? Right. So, the point is that, yes, you have faith, and when that happens, you make dua to Allah, you pray to Allah, and when that happens, it increases your so faith. Faith is your faith, yes. But it's, my faith is not built on that, right? Exactly. So, let's say if I didn't find my car, all right. I mean, it's like the, the typical. Yeah, I still uh, trust the choice of God. The typical TV show uh, talks about faith, and then God, if you're real, you'll make this bottle of water move. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't, you're not real. Exactly. Right. Uh, and and Islam is like, you know, uh, you know what? If I see it move, it just increases my faith anyway. Right. Yeah, but it's not. Dependent, like Dependent this is not like, this is not the pillar. Exactly, it doesn't cause me to believe. Exactly. I already believe, and if it does move, it just increases my faith. Right, but because if that is my pillar, then the Hindu has a pillar, the Christians have a pillar, the people who would follow Antichrist would also have a pillar. Right, right. I mean, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so you basically, you're just worshiping power. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yeah. Worship. There's no spirituality, right? Right. Because you're worshiping power, and the same thing, right? I mean. You know, uh, you still even in the thing like yes, yeah, so you do whatever the most powerful people yeah, would you like you do, like, even if they're corrupt. There's a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Benny Hen. Mm. Um, he'd have uh, healing services, and so thousands of people, and it's been like on Dateline, NBC, right. and those types of programs as well, where thousands of people would would enter these stadiums where like basketball players, you know, perform, yeah. right? And people will go there with crutches and wheelchairs and, you know, diseases of all sorts, from AIDS to, you know, uh, scoli scoliosis, right. you know, uh, for this man of God, right, who God gave this, this ability to, to heal. And you would say, uh, you know, fire on you and people would fall in masses and twitch and, and so on. And people would come up onto the stage and say, I felt this sensation come over my body and and so on and so forth that is then a deception yeah I, I mean and to be honest with you and completely transparent I mean we do have this type of people in the Muslim world as well oh okay right so that sort of craziness exists in Muslim world as well right so I mean again it's not specific to one religion right right okay. I mean people would always exploit it right the people so so again not every Muslim is following Islam right so so just so that nobody, somebody so you have to have you, a, you, yeah. you have to have discernment. Right. Yeah, so yeah, discernment. So, I mean, exactly. Uh, and, and be able to 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 tell genuine, you know, because then you're worshiping power. Exactly. I'm going to go see this guy right. because I believe God gave him a power that can heal me, as opposed to saying that me be in supplication and, and to God, yeah. right, and, and uh, beg up on His mercy and pray to Him and worship Him on my own, and let God heal me. Right, and, and if it, if it's in His will, exactly. And what is healing as well, right? I mean, for some people, they're maybe they're already healed, right? And they just don't know it. Yeah, meaning that I mean, if your body is sick, maybe that's better for you, right? I mean, at the end of the day, like that's that's one of the things to think about, right? So if I'm running the world, I wouldn't make myself sick, right? Mm -hmm. But God has a choice, right? His choice is not like okay, just randomly sprinkle sickness and healing, right? So if He chose me to have some sickness, there's a reason. For there's it. a reason for it, mm -hmm. right? Maybe that's like, you know, slowing me down. That's probably putting my ignorance, arrogance down, mm -hmm. right? That's some sort of an expiation for my sins, mm -hmm. right? He wants me to have a higher level in paradise, which I'm too lazy to get, right? So how do I know that, you know, same thing, right? So, for example, the same thing with my car or whatever, right? I mean, it was, it's not random that somebody took my car or whatever. It's like, you know, it's a choice that God has. There's a reason for it, yeah. Right, and then, so it becomes like, you know, 
do you trust him right so if you have a very trustworthy friend and then you know he puts you in a car and he's driving and you know he, he like you guys are planning to go to like states or whatever and then he takes a route that you do not recognize and don't worry, trust me. I trust him. Yeah, you know, right? yeah. You trust him. All right, I'm gonna take a nap, man. <laughs> Just keep trying. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that sort of thing, right? So, um, yeah. So, so yeah. So my point was that yeah. So miracles, you know, help you. They increase you. I mean, I don't, I don't have a doubt that Quran cannot cure cancer, right? By the will of God, reading Quran and someone can cure cancer if God wants that to be better for them and what have you. But you know, I'm not gonna be depending my faith on somebody's right. ability to do that or not. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so there's so, no authority of the believer. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We don't have authority. God has the only authority. We can only be in supplication to Him. And trusting His choices. And right? trusting Him. Because yeah. because He said that He's going to test us with hardship and with ease. And both of them are equally test. Right. Some people, when they're tried with hardship, they lose it and they start going to graves and these, you know healers and what have you and they start having their faith in them and some people are like you know really humbled by those experiences and they put their trust in god and so on and so forth likewise when people are given ease you know luxury love wealth fame status you know some people are thankful they use it to serve god and some people go on the opposite side no people just yeah right abuses yeah so you can have some comfort or discomfort to the body right mm -hmm. but the comfort and discomfort of the soul and your relationship with God does not depend on your comfort of your body right your body could be in discomfort but your soul is having fun enjoying relaxed right and vice versa right so your body could be at comfort but soul is then going down not necessarily but yeah, no, yeah, it can go either way right no, so it's yeah, a test yeah, yeah, it's, either it's way. a test in either ways right so so, so that's that, right? And then, and then the next point about salvation, right? So basically, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, as I said, like you would have sins, right? Sins of consequences. You lose, you go away from God. The worst consequences of a sin is that uh, the, the light of faith may go away, mm -hmm. right? You consistently do it. You become arrogant, right? And other thing is that you can still be sinning consistently, right? There, there were companions of the prophet, or at least one companion of the prophet, peace be upon him. He could not give up alcohol, right? drank, repented, punished, drank, repented, but he still prayed, he still loved a lot. That was his weakness, right? He's going to go to paradise, right? Because of everything else that he did, his sincerity and so on and so forth, he had this one weakness, mm -hmm. and every time he would do it, he would be sincerely sorry for that. Mm -hmm. so, so like that, right? So, so meaning that the salvation, the concept of salvation is, number one, the mercy of God. Because mm -hmm. your guidance and your acceptance of Islam is by the mercy of God. You're sitting here is like... If you think about it, like God chose you to be here mm -hmm. like out of all the other people in this society, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, he facilitated for you. So that's his mercy in the first place, right? You know, you accepting guidance is his mercy, right? And then he did every good deed that we do, he multiplies it many times. At the minimum, each good deed is multiplied by 10. At the minimum, mm -hmm. right? And depending on your sincerity and your quality, it can go up like very, very high, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, on the other hand, each bad deed is only one. Okay. So, there's a weighing of good deeds and bad deeds. That's also opposite of Christianity, by the way. Right. And the other way around. Yes. Yeah. And on top of that, um, when you get sick, mm -hmm. right, any sort of discomfort that you face, your car is lost, your job is lost, whatever, and you're patient for the sake of God, so you, you feel something in your body, your, your body is tried, all that increases your good deeds. You seeking sincere repeat, repentance, increase your good deeds, wipes your bad deeds. So like that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how eventually you will meet God and this is how you'll be done, right? So on the day of, so basically, you know, any sickness, anything that happens in this world is basically sins being removed. Any punishment, any hardship in the grave, sins being removed. And eventually you meet God. And with the mercy of God, you may just directly enter paradise. And we hope and we pray that we are from that. For some people, they will go into hellfire for a certain period of time, depending on how much they were forgiven and mm -hmm. what was the nature of their bad deeds and what have you. Right. And they will eventually enter paradise okay. if they, so if they worship Allah alone. Right. Right. And they believe in the prophet of their time. Right. Uh, and, and like that. And there will be people who would be in hellfire forever. If somebody is in hellfire forever, in, like God's like so, the mercy of 
the entire world, right, is one part of hundred parts of the mercy of God, right? Mm -hmm. So all the mercy that we have among each other, that we see in the animal kingdom, that we see from a mother to a child, all of that combined is only one part of the mercy of one part of the hundred parts of mercy of God. So which means that if somebody is destined in hellfire forever, that person deserved to be in there. Right? Because having such a person in, in paradise would decrease the quality of paradise. Right? So that is the judgment of God, right? And then what God has said in the Quran that you know, any any sin can be repented for. Right? And if you die even without repentance, God can still forgive you. Or you can be forgiven after the punishment of the or after the punishment of hellfire. But the only sin that would not be forgiven if you do not repent from it is the is the sin of associating partners with God. And that's what we we're talking about earlier, is that and calling out to Jesus, Muhammad, thinking that they own the world, they, they have control, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and things like that. And then some people just worship their desires. I'll do what makes me feel good. Yeah, do what I want. So yeah. either you worship power or your own desires or whatever, you're not submitting to uh, to God. Uh, so that's kind of like around uh, salvation. Now, something that I was hearing this morning or last night, God said, actually, one of the letters that Prophet Muhammad wrote to one of the Christian kings, he said, you know, accept Islam, and you will have two rewards. So that's something very beautiful, and I just heard it, I think, this morning, actually, yeah. So meaning that if someone like you accepts Islam because you had accepted the message of Jesus first, and now you're believing Islam, right? So from the mercy of God, you have two rewards. So meaning that let's say you live 40 more years or 30 more years, right? And mm -hmm. you pray for 30 years. You will get the reward of 60 years. So... I can be jealous of that, but again, right. from the mercy of God, right. that is, is that yeah. that, and this is to the people of the book, right? Right, it's the words in you know in Quran. You which would, them, which I, was, saying, yes, what, what, yes. So Christian and Jews, right. when they upgrade, they said you'll have double the reward. <laughs> He's the word upgrade now, right? <laughs> We're still two thousand eighteen now, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I understand. Like, yeah, we just transition, yeah, into the next phase, exactly. right? Yeah. So for those who seek the truth, absolutely. Uh, and then finally, I think you had the point of spouse, and that's what I... No, yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, if God created marriage here right. on earth, why would then he not allow that to continue uh, in, in heaven? Right? And it would not be wise for someone to marry someone uh, who's not on the same line, you know, yeah. in terms of theology and religion. Right. Because then you're not going together towards well, like, God. Like you said, like, uh, it was like in a gray zone. I, to be honest, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of content. I'm like, you know what? I went through a lot to get here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm kind of done. You know? I got, I know my thing. I got my Bibles. Right? I got like five of them at home. Right? I have study Bibles. And all, you know? And, and I've, I've, I've flipped that thing many times. I've read it three times back to front mm -hmm. in my life. Right? And do I understand it all? Far from it. And you're not the only one, right? There are many actually Christian uh, pastors who are now, you know, actually callers to Islam. They're like actually engaged in calling. Right, but, but like just, just to say, like I just was like I'm done, yeah. right? Yeah. I wasn't going to church. Right. I wasn't uh, like all that guy uh, ten years ago who was like, you know, ah, a Muslim. Yes, let's go. You know. Yeah. And have the you know 